Legendary and enthusiast-focused cars are known mostly for two things. Their design, but also their iconic powertrains under the hood. And today, I'm sitting next to the 2015 Infiniti Q60S. Now, back in 2014, Infiniti went through a rebadging for their alphanumeric system. So the G37 sedan and the G37 coupe were rebadged the Q40 and the Q60. Now, the 2015 model year is one of the last to utilize the 3.7 liter naturally aspirated V6. And that's why I am here, because this is a very special car. And in fact, this 2015 Q60 might be one of the cleanest examples I've ever seen. So clean, in fact, that the paint is in pretty good condition. It's almost showroom clean. For a seven-year-old car, this was very well maintained. I was told that it was garage kept, and I'm pretty sure that this car was not driven during the winter because that would easily be noticeable, especially living up here in New England, and this was a local car. Then taking a look at these 19-inch wheels, they are in perfect condition. There is no curb rash on any of them at all, which is very rare, especially for a Q60 or even a G37 coupe and for a car of this age. And then as we make our way around to the back, giving you a look at the paint, still in immaculate condition. The owner did clean the exhaust steps before trading this car in, which is pretty rare to see. I was told that the owner did not put on ceramic coating or Expel. So the owner was very meticulous with their car, a lot of pride of ownership as well, which is great to see for a sports coupe of this age. And then taking a look inside, we do have leather seats, which again is not showing that much age at all. Not a lot of stretching, not a lot of cracks. Super clean. Now inside the Q60, there is no dust, no dirt. Let's turn it on. And there's just under 64,900 miles on this model. So driven less than 10,000 miles a year which really isn't too bad. So I don't think this car was driven during the winter. So in this video, we're gonna take an extensive look at the Q60S or really the G37 Coupe. We're going to analyze the packages that are equipped on this model and also see why if you are looking at buying a sports coupe at under $30,000, then maybe taking a look at the G37 or the Q60 might be a great decision. Now, before we get in this video, I wanna give a huge shout and thank you to Infinity of Norwood in Nord, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. I also want to thank Adam, who's a general manager at Infinity of Norwood, for inviting me down here to check out this Q60. I'll leave their link in the description below so you can check out their extensive Infinity inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. To say that they don't make cars like this anymore, would probably be the understatement of the year. As it's not just Nissan and Infiniti who've pressed forward in the era of computer-driven vehicles and have departed from the analog and mechanical aspects that enthusiasts truly admire about cars from an older generation. Despite the Q60 still being in production today, albeit with a new powertrain, interior, and drive-by-wire steering, this rebadged G37 Coupe is certainly a sports car built for a different time period, one in which you felt the heightened sense of connection to every minor input when cornering, but also the performance, even if it's not impressive by 2022 standards, was captivating and engaging on longer drives. Today, here we are seven years later, admiring a forgotten gem that could very well be a great option if you're looking for a fun weekend sports car. Getting into pricing, the original MSRP for the model we're featuring today was just under $52,000. But for a base Q60 with all-wheel drive, you were looking at spending $42,600. Being built on Nissan's FM platform, the G37 Coupe and early Q60s 
were closely related to the Nissan 370Z, sharing similar components but also the same powertrain. However, with this coupe actually being known as a Nissan Skyline in Japan, they had to take a different approach for this car to not only separate it from the 370, but to also establish in other markets that it was in fact its own entity and worthy of the Infiniti badge here in the US. And that becomes evident at first glance when staring at the Q60's road presence. An evolution in design from the G35, this generation built on the strong body lines and aerodynamic look that was already present for this coupe, but added smoother aesthetics such as the reshaped bi xenon headlights, more aggressive lower air vent that opened up space on the front fascia to integrate fog lights, and also modernizing the grille with the classic chrome accents. While still retaining its similarity to other Nissan sports cars, the Q60 and G37 of this era had such a classy look that really set the tone for what drivers would experience when getting behind the wheel. Moving over to the side profile, with the sports package, 19-inch split V-spoke aluminum wheels complement the look of this sports coupe. And despite the larger tire size and sports-tuned suspension, the Q60 can manage imperfections in the road surprisingly well. And with the sports brakes, you'll have the confidence to take this car on winding back roads. Then making our way around to the back, there's certainly similarities to other Nissans built on the same chassis as the dual exhaust outlets and the shape of the rear third do in fact resemble the 370Z. A subtle chrome deck lid spoiler once again reinforces that this coupe's primary purpose was not to be an all-out track monster, and instead the on-road demeanor of the Q60 is one that reflects a slightly more sophisticated driving experience. But for those who are on the fence about whether to buy the Infiniti G37 or Q60, rather than the 370Z, there's points of emphasis that clear up its role within the Nissan family, even though it shares the same engine. Now under the hood, of course, we had the 3.7 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine, producing 330 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque, and our model does have the 7-speed automatic transmission, but a 6-speed manual was available. Compare this to the engine that's under the hood of the new Q60 in the current generation, you have the 3-liter twin-turbo V6. So if you're looking for an old-school powertrain, I think the older Q60s is, is certainly the way to go. But there are a few key differences between the Q60 with the 3.7 and also the Nissan 370Z. And one of those key differences is this badge right here, which is all-wheel drive. The 370Z was only rear-wheel drive, and rear-wheel drive was standard for the Q60 back in 2015. But this right here gives you a bit more flexibility, but also more importantly, year-round daily drivability. Key difference number two is the fact that you have two rear seats. Now, I'm not saying you'll be able to fit average size adults back here. I don't think that's possible at all. However, you can have smaller kids in the second row, and also you can have an extra wheel or two, so that way, if you are going for more of a staggered setup, you can do that, much like the last owner of this car. But the fact that you have extra seats, it gives you a bit more practicality, but also you're paying less on insurance. And then lastly, the most important difference for the Q60 between the 370Z is that it's luxurious and more grand tour-like, and it's very much of its time period. It reminds me a lot of cars that fit this mold back in the day, but also this generation and this platform is now 14 years old and it certainly shows that age but what I love though is that the interior layout is classy with the analog clock in the dashboard itself but also the interior is very comfortable with these sports leather seats which provide a lot of support and a lot of bolstering. As part of the $3,250 premium package the driver's side will have memory seat functionality along with two-way lumbar support. The driver will also be greeted by a power tilting and telescopic steering wheel, but better yet, the entire column and gauge cluster also adjust to ensure they have clear visibility when looking down at the speedometer. Magnesium paddle shifters are certainly a must if you do intend on having a more engaging driving experience with the 7-speed automatic transmission, as the premium quality encourages you to be in manual mode on spirited drives. Then moving over to the infotainment system, 
This Q60 has the $1,800 navigation package, which is useful as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto aren't compatible with this head unit. However, you can listen to your playlists and downloaded podcasts, which sound fantastic thanks to the 11-speaker Bose audio system. Despite its age, this touchscreen is pretty responsive, and you'll have a rotary dial with quick access buttons to get you to different menus or the navigation system. Interestingly enough, even for a 7-year-old car, you do have a rear backup camera with trajectory, and when equipped with that premium package, rear parking sensors adds another layer of safety. Since the digital information display that's found between the analog gauges isn't intuitive, your fuel climb statistics will be showcased on the head unit. Below, you'll find the buttons and dials for the volume and tuning, dual zone climb control, and yes, your eyes aren't deceiving you, the Q60 does offer a CD player. While old school and traditional, everything is within arm's reach and easy to memorize, as newer tech and cars for 2022 can be a bit confusing and not user friendly. As you make your way towards the center console, tucked away is a 12 volt outlet, with a compartment for loose change. And then between the driver and passenger, you have the dials for the heated seats, and switch for snow mode if you plan on driving the Q60 during the winter. For the center storage compartment, there'll be enough room for a smartphone, and you'll have a single USB input. And rounding out the interior for the Q60, a power moonroof will let in some natural light and the outside air into the cabin. Now coming around to the back, taking a look at the rear cargo area, you're going to have right around 7.4 cubic feet of room. Now we do have one of the spare wheels back here, along with the first aid kit. And I was able to fit all my camera gear today, no problem. That's two bags of camera gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod, which is pretty impressive. Even though this is a small cargo compartment, you could definitely go on a road trip with a significant other, no problem. At least that's just my opinion. This enough space here where this could be daily drivable depending on what your lifestyle is. Then on the left side of the rear cargo area, you will have a latch to release the second row seats. So that way, if you need more room for your golf clubs, you can do so. And honestly, I think the Q60 as a daily driver, if you are maybe going to the country clubs or you are going on a road trip, you can definitely do that with the Q60, which I'm a bit impressed with, to be honest. So we're gonna have an opportunity to hear this 3.7 liter V6. <laughs> oh, it has such a nice sound to it. It adds so much character to this car that the three liter turbo just doesn't give the modern infinities. So I'm gonna show you guys what manual mode is like in a safe environment. <laughs> you get a lot of power at around four to 5,000 RPM. So you get most of the performance really at mid range. That's one thing I have noticed. You get an initial jolt off the line, but where you get most of the kick when you are on a roll is at four to 5,000 RPM. I'll do this one more time before I leave this location. I don't want to get myself into too much trouble here. <laughs> oh. And the brakes, very responsive. You don't need to travel on that brake pedal too much to slow this car down. Now, back in the day, they did say that the brakes were a bit touchy, but as an enthusiast, I have no problem with those brakes. Now, as I alluded to earlier in this video, a lot of people claim the 370Z and the G37 slash Q60 are basically the same car. And I disagree with that on a number of different levels. One, the interior quality is far and away better than the 370Z. In fact, even when it comes to road noise, I hear a lot of the engine, but not a lot of the outside world, even with the 19 inch wheels. 
But also, there is one key element to this car that completely changes the driving dynamics. So one, I already feel that the Q60 and the G37 is a Grand Tour, more so than a sports coupe. But also, when you look at the weight difference, you have about 300 to 500 pound difference between the G37 Q60 and the 370Z. And that makes a huge difference difference in how this car performs. It's not as agile, even with the sports tuned suspension. It has a bit more of a heavier feel to it, and that really translates to the hydraulic steering, which I personally love. I remember a number of journalists back in the day weren't too happy with the hydraulic steering, that, oh, you know, electric steering is far better, it's more responsive. But seven years later, or really now 14 years later from this particular generation and chassis, I have no problem with that. No problem at all. It also has a Nissan GTR-like feel to it. I can totally see the appeal as to why someone would buy a G37. Especially since when you look at the price point, you're looking at around twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, if not less than that. Now, as I already talked about at the beginning of this video, this Q60 is very clean, very clean. It was very well taken care of. <laughs> and I think if you're looking for a car that was well kept and well maintained, I think at 25, this is a great deal. When you're going over the bumps and imperfections in the road, you really don't feel them, even with the sports tune suspension and also the 19 inch wheels. And that surprises me because again, you would think that a car built on the same platform as the 370Z would share the same driving characteristics and yet it really doesn't. And that just reinforces the notion that the G37 and the Q60 for this generation really is a different car for a completely different type of buyer. And there really is no complaints with this car at all. It has a nice power delivery. You get most of that power mid-range, but also with the ride quality, the interior quality, the way it feels on the road, whether you are on the highway or on the back roads in the suburbs or just driving around the city, it's a very compliant car. It's compliant and competent. And I think that's one of the reasons why the G37 and the Q60 got overlooked by competitors because there's just no complaints. There's no struggle with the car at all, especially with all-wheel drive. Now, I think with rear-wheel drive, probably be having a bit more fun with the roads being as damp as they are and also with it being 44 degrees. But it's a comfortable daily. It's a car that is just all-around fun. It's also luxurious and upscale compared to the 370Z. I can totally see why people who maybe are a little older, an older demographic, love this car. And it's snowing. It is snowing on my test drive. This is a first. This is definitely a first. Now, when it comes to the interior, we do have more of a more minimalistic interior that probably at the time was outdated because again, this car was about seven years old or the platform was seven years old, even in 2015. So it was definitely behind BMW, Audi and Mercedes Benz. Although because this car has that old grand touring feel, I can appreciate it now in 2022. Maybe not so much if I was reviewing this car back in 2015, but I think that really just ties into the fact that you have hydraulic steering too. So it's all analog, it's all old school. And I think that's what gives this car a unique personality that a lot of vehicles today just don't have. Now, unfortunately with it snowing, raining and everything else in between, I really can't go all out with this car, even though I do have all wheel drive, but I do wanna showcase some of the steering. And even though the hydraulic steering is very heavy, when you are cornering at higher speeds, the steering does loosen up a bit and it really 
dials in to your driving style. The rear end actually kicked out there. <laughs> yeah, can't really go all out with the cornering ability today with the roads being wet and also with it being kind of cold out, but the steering is to me on point and for myself, I like it this way. I like having a heavier steering. I like having to put some muscle into it. Not a lot of cars today give you that. Now getting into the overall vision when you are behind the wheel of the Q60 or really the G37, you have a nice panoramic view in front of you. A pillars are super thin, which is to be expected for a sports coupe. Then taking a look at your side mirrors, they are placed in a good spot, but they are rather small, but I can see what's in my blind spot. But one key feature I really like about the Q60 when it comes to its design is how big the windows are. I can see everything since there is no C pillar. So it gives me a lot more visibility to my left and my right, especially if I'm on the highway and I have cars in my blind spots. And looking out back, even though we do have a smaller rear window, I can see what's behind me. Here's my final assessment for the Q60. It's a 370Z that went to prep school or went Ivy League. It became responsible, got good grades, but never lost its bad side. It never lost its dangerous side where the 3.7 liter V6, you have a lot of fun, you can really enjoy yourself, but you can do so without drawing a lot of attention to yourself because it has a luxurious look to it. It's an infinity. It's unassuming. You can have a lot of fun and fly below the radar. And that to me is why I love Grand Tours. And that to me is why I think the G37 and the Q60 is a Grand Tour at the end of the day. It's comfortable, it's luxurious, it's refined, and it's also mature compared to that 370Z. What a fantastic car. It's so overlooked, so undervalued, and I think totally worth taking a look at, without question. So to wrap up my time with the Infiniti Q60S, I really overlooked this car as an enthusiast. I never understood the hype or the passion surrounding this car from other enthusiasts in the car community until today. The naturally aspirated V6 engine, that 3.7, is a time capsule to the past where we just don't see engines like that anymore outside of the Nissan GTR, but that's a slightly different engine. But also, the fact that this car is so old school, I think that it's not a detriment. Sure, I think as a new car, it might have been back in 2015, but the hydraulic steering seven years later is so great. I actually love it. There's so much feedback. It's different than electronic steering. And even though I am a fan of the drive-by wire that's in the new Q50 and Q60, the hydraulic steering to me is just so unique and really up my alley for a lot of these Grand Tours and cars of this time period. Also, the interior really isn't that bad either with the analog clock and the dashboard, that old analog style. And also, I love the interior quality of this car. The leather seats are very supportive. They're very comfortable. And to be quite honest, I now understand why these cars are highly coveted now within the car community and also enthusiasts. This car right here, I think, is special. Yes, it is overlooked. Yes, it did lose a lot of value throughout the years. But as a second car, as a Grand Tour, I think the Q60 and the G37 Coupe is still a very special car. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.